Some child care centers across Alberta were closed yesterday to protest the federal child care program that they call unsustainable. The Association of Alberta Child Care Entrepreneurs says 25,000 of its uh, no 25,000 of its clients were affected in the first day of rolling closures to push back against $10 a day child care. They say the program is underfunded and the province shares those concerns. I, I personally have some huge concerns about the level of funding that the federal government has put into this agreement. A couple years ago, uh, when the federal government was undertaking this process, um, there was a, a lot of estimates put in about what it would actually take to have the system roll across the country. I think as all the provinces are realizing, now that we're a couple years into this, is that there is some significant concern amongst different provinces about the, um, the perceived lack of funding. Crystal Churcher is the chair of the Association of Alberta Child Care Entrepreneurs. Uh, Crystal Churcher, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So when this $10 a day child care program was launched, billions of dollars went into the system, but you're saying that it is unsustainable for the industry. Walk me through your concerns here. You know, it's actually not even just me saying that it was underfunded. There's been several reports. Um, you know, the Parliamentary Budget Committee did a report showing all of the underfunding. Um, Cardis did an amazing report too that showed each province um, how much the provinces would have to, to top up the federal funding. Um, but I think that we are just two years in, so we're starting to kind of see the impact that the lack of funding and the way this is rolling out is starting to have across the country. So, so what is the impact? Explain it to me from your business. I, I know the fees for a parent will be capped at $10, sure. but you'd be compensated for reducing your fees uh, to, to match that level through the government money. Mm -hmm. Why isn't that enough? Why isn't it working? Um, well, it's kind of a complicated thing to, to explain, but the $10 a day um, promise for each child um, is really an average across the country. So it's an average across each province. Not all families are ever going to see $10 a day for childcare. Um, in Alberta right now, we're at a $15 a day average. So again, it's not available to every family. It's an average across mm -hmm. the province. Um, how this is working is that we're not compensated by this program as operators, whether we're not for profit or for profit. Um, we've been asked to reduce our fees. So when we rolled this program out in Alberta in 2022, we were asked to immediately reduce parent fees by 50%. So 50% um, of the fees for childcare would be paid by the parent on the first of the month. And then after the end of that month, we'd be able to essentially claim the other 50% back from the government. Um, that's how this is funded. Our fees were actually frozen when we signed into this. So fees don't change for us. Um, it's just who funds our program. So now we're in a situation in Alberta where we're just about to start this 15 month interim agreement and the funding model has changed slightly. Um, the affordability grant for parents has gone up, which is amazing. Parents are seeing a massive you know, reduction in childcare fees. So the parents are paying about 15% or less to the operators on the first of the month. We're then claiming back sometimes 90, sometimes 85% of that full cost at the end of the month from the provincial government. So right. that's where we're at in Alberta. It, it's, a, it's really the same fees, it just depends on who's paying it. Right, I, I know the YMCA has made similar complaints here in Ontario uh, about mm -hmm. how you know you get a, a little bit of money up front and a lot of money at the end of the month. So is this a cash flow problem? or is it a funding it's problem? Absolutely. Absolutely a cash flow, flow problem. Um, I think funding long term is a problem as far as, you know, making sure we have adequate um, quality and services in the future of childcare, but funding is an immediate issue in Alberta, like an, an issue for kind of tomorrow, like how how are we going to pay rent for February 1st mm -hmm. when we only can access 15% of our full revenue on the first of the month? Um, you know, one of our board members, she has a uh, center which is quite heavily subsidized. So she services a lot of low-income families. 88% um, of her um, families are on subsidy as well as the affordability grant. And they pay zero to her on the first of the month. So coming tomorrow on February 1st, she'll receive about $12,000 from parents. And the rest she'll have to wait 40 to 45 days to get back from the province. So she's really in a situation she can't pay her rent tomorrow. She won't be able to pay payroll because there's just not enough access to cash flow for her. Right. So, uh, I mean, I, I can understand th this being a problem, right? You have to carry all of your operating costs and, and your, your inflexible structure costs for your space and these things mm -hmm. while the money comes at the back end. So 
that's the provincial government, though, that reimburses that. So have you talked to them about changing the way, like doing weekly or middle of the month, end of the month, changing? Mm -hmm. the, what, what, is the, what is the government of Alberta willing to do here to help you with this cash um, this payment system? I'm, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully more than what they have so far for two years. Um, <laughs> we, you know, we we're kind of working with with them shortly here I, I think we came to a bit of a standstill in Alberta working with our, our actual children's services minister um, there was no give on what they would be willing to do as far as changing any of the way the program is, is set up um, we did do a, a day of action yesterday across the province and um, we will be meeting with with the ministry again tomorrow night um, so hopefully that looks like you know we may be able to have some solution-based conversations and really come up with something to ensure that you know, families have access to to call high quality child care across the province. Uh, I just wonder the the Alberta Families Minister said this was a small number of child care operators that don't support the program, but the vast majority do. How, how widespread? Like, how big is your group that had this day of action? How many different centers are, are part of that? And what do you make of that characterization mm -hmm. from the minister? Um, you know, I think we all have different perceptions, um, different lensing, depending on where you're standing, right? Um, I do not think that 25,000 spaces that have been closed across the province for a day is a small group of people. Um, we impacted a large number of families yesterday, and we we're very gracious to those families for putting up with that inconvenience of not having childcare so that we could bring awareness to these issues. Um, the minister really, um, this is our fourth minister in children's services in Alberta in two years, and it's a complicated file for anyone to understand. And I, I think he's still catching up and I'm always open to, you know, sharing information what it's like to be a, a child care operator on the ground and, and how this is actually rolling out. Um, you know, I, I look forward to some some future conversations around the impact that that day had and how many centers were actually closed and and how many participated. We we have, you know, membership of almost 300 centers. Uh, we represent over 30,000 childcare spaces across the province, which is over 25% of all childcare in Alberta. And we had 100% solidarity in that day. So um, definitely not represented by a small number. I, I know you say long-term you think this is a funding issue, but I just want to be clear, like right now this is, this is not how much money is available for the program, it's how quickly the money moves from government bank accounts into your bank account, right? This is really what is at the um, crux of the issue right now? Well, I mean, there's there's multiple issues. When right. you have a federal program rolling out across the country that is, you know, really promoting only the support of nonprofit, standardized, publicly funded childcare, um, that immediately causes issues for, for parents. There's no choice in that. You mm -hmm. get to pick from this model of childcare. Um, it also excludes the private child care, which in Alberta is 70% of all child care. So um, that's an issue. I mean, that's something we've spoke about. I spoke at the Senate committees on this. Um, that's a major issue that we have with the federal program. Funding wise, I think that, you know, it's very confusing for people to understand this has been marketed as a $10 a day program that every Canadian will have access to, which is not the case. These are provincial averages. You would have to be able to receive full subsidy as well as the full affordability grant to be able to ever see a $10 a day childcare space. And then from my understanding is what we're going to be seeing is that the shortfall in the funding, both provincially and federally, not all childcare spaces that are being created in each province are, are going to have access to these programs. So there's just not enough money to create widespread childcare across each province that is federally funded at a $10 a day rate. Um, it's going to start to be targeted in Alberta where only centers that are opening in very high needs childcare deserts, they're called, um, will actually have access to these programs. Hmm. So that, again, is not representing a $10 a day model for all Albertans. That's representing a $10 a day model for centers that can access this. And that's where the question and concern around access comes from, you know. Um, it's not for everyone. It's not available to everyone. But, but in terms of the viability of, of your members and, and, a, and a business like mm -hmm. yours, it sounds to me like it, it's the inconsistent cash flow, the inability to have cash on hand at the beginning mm -hmm. of the month to make payroll, to pay rent. That is the most right. pressing and immediate concern. Am I understanding that correctly? Because we're going to talk to the minister That's, in a little bit, and I want to be able to ask her about this. Sure. That's absolutely an immediate concern. Um, that's like tomorrow concern in our province. Um, but that will be a provincial concern. Federally, I, I can already see, you know, the federal government has given the funds, which are a substantial amount of money. Like, I'm not downplaying the investment federally in this program. I think 
it's you know been wonderful to see the government take a stance on affordable child care. Um, our federal minister will not support anything you know about what the provinces are doing. That is up to the provinces. They negotiated right. their own deals with the federal government, right? So I think that you know from a federal minister's standpoint, this is an Alberta problem, and the province will need to fix this funding model. Um, you know. The YMCA in Ontario is saying very similar things, I think. Um, I've seen it and heard it across the country, different, you know, we're all seeing the same thing. So I think like what I like to use for an analogy of this program is, um, you know, the provinces were handed a bag of money. They were given a contract with the federal government to essentially buy their child care systems. And in doing that, they have put restrictions on these child care systems. They've left the provinces with you know, these um, guidelines and contracts that they have to follow in order to continue to get this government funding from the federal government. Right. And I think that the provinces are struggling to put together systems that work within each province because we all have a very different, diverse child care system in each province. Um, they don't understand the child care system. They don't understand the sector. Um, they're coming in and trying to rebuild the sector without the knowledge or understanding to do it correctly. And I think that's why we're starting to see it crumble here. Crystal Churcher, I, I appreciate your time. That's Crystal Churcher, the chair of the Association of Alberta Child Care Entrepreneurs. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Okay, for more on this, we're going to speak with Jenna Suds. She's the Federal Minister of Families, Children, and Social Development, and she joins me now in the studio. Minister, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. You, you heard the concerns there. I, I know it's a provincial issue, the, the cash flow, but I wanted to get your sense as the minister at the federal level responsible for this. Is that how this is supposed to work? Because this... I've never run a small business, but that seems like it would be a real operational hardship. Yes, well, thank you, David. And first of all, I have to say, as a mom, my heart goes out to the families that I know were impacted yesterday. Um, you know, child care is a necessity. We need it in order to go to work. And so, you know, I feel for those families as they scrambled yesterday. Um, I think what's important to, to highlight here is, uh, you know, we don't expect that this system can be built overnight. Um, this is a major nationwide system that we are working to build with our partners, with the provinces and territories. And it's been a resounding success. Undoubtedly, there's challenges along the way that we work with our partners to overcome. But the impact for families of this program is just incredible. And I, I have the, the honor of being able to have these conversations with families to understand right. that impact. Uh, in Alberta, it's over $10,000 a month that these families are saving. So undoubtedly, there's, there's challenges to work through. Um, but we're here to work with our partners to do so. 10000 a month or 10000 a year? Oh, excuse me, 10000 okay, right, a year. Right, so like that's, that's quite the break yeah. in Alberta. But, but on that point, like, look, uh, you know, I, my kids are out of childcare now. I know how much it costs for me. Um, and, and, you know, the value of the sort of the price tag that mm -hmm. is being promised for this program is appealing. But parents can't get the benefit if the operators can't make it work. Mm -hmm. and, and you heard uh, what Crystal Churcher was saying there, the way the cash flow is working. Mm -hmm. I know that's the provincial government, but like as a partner in that, what, what, what insight do you have into that? What influence do you have on that to change it? Mm -hmm. Well, the example we're talking about today with Alberta, um, just to share some of the background. So the funding that we're providing uh, to the province over five years is almost $4 billion, mm -hmm. $3.8 billion. Our expectations with that, which is an agreement, it's public, that has been signed uh, with the province of Alberta, require them to, first of all, reduce fees, which we saw happen quite quickly, get to 50% and get to $10 a day. Uh, by 2026, but also to create 68,000 new spaces. So those are the parameters under which we agree to give the, the government of Alberta these dollars. How Alberta proceeds in working with operators, um, how, as we are hearing yeah. the challenge here now, how they deal with these cash flow, how they build their funding formula, these are decisions that the province and the operators need to make collectively. I completely understood that this is provincial jurisdiction and this is provincial responsibility, uh, but this was federal liberal policy, you know? And, and, and it's not just in Alberta, we're hearing these complaints, we're hearing mm -hmm. it in Ontario. Like uh, the YMCA are not radicals. Like they, they, you know, they, they run these programs and they're struggling because of this. So, so how concerned are you mm -hmm. that the way this is being implemented is causing challenges for what really is a core economic affordability and social policy of your government? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I think you're quite right. This is a core policy of our government and one that I'm incredibly proud of. This is, uh, again, a nationwide system we're building. It won't happen overnight, but this is good for kids. It's good for families. It's good for the economy. So, of course, I'm worried when I hear challenges in Alberta or in Ontario, as you've referenced. But I do believe, you know, brick by brick, we are building this system. Um, you know, the agreements that we've signed with all of these provinces, the provinces had clear, um, clear transparency as to what our expectations were and what funding we would give them to execute on those expectations. Right. And so, you know, it's not easy, but we'll continue to work with them to get there. But the, the assumptions change that the, the programs were uh, developed under because the cost of living and inflation has hit mm -hmm. every sector. And child care operators, you know, have to feed the kids. They got to, you know, the, the, they have, they, they don't have big margins and they would be affected by this. So we've heard Daniel Smith suggest maybe there needs to be more federal money. Premier Ford has suggested mm -hmm. maybe there needs to be more federal money. Is there space for more federal money on this over the five-year term or seven-year, in Ontario's case, of the deals you've signed? There is no more money. We've made a $30 billion investment across the country in building this system. And I would challenge, I would push back, uh, and in particular on Alberta. Uh, Alberta spent half of the money that we sent to them last year. So if they are lapsing dollars, if they haven't been able to utilize all of the dollars that we've sent them, David, would would you give them more? So, you know? well, well, why why has that not been spent? What what is your what are your officials telling you? They they can't get the uptake, or they're just not spending it. What what's the answer there? That's that's the million dollar question, frankly, and I think it's one that families deserve an answer to. Um, as we've seen, the operators uh, in Alberta are having challenges. Uh, it is up to the province to sit down with the operators, with parents to understand how they can move forward. And as I've said, you know, we've, we've put $4 billion on the table with Alberta. Um, it's at their you know, prerogative of how to best direct that to ensure that families benefit from this program. And so I, you know, I challenge them to do that. We're here as partners to help them. But surely there's a compliance function, an audit mm -hmm. function in, in the agreements you have with the different provinces. So is that your department? Is it Minister Freeland's Department of Finance? Like uh, what, what are your officials asking and finding out about why the money is yeah. not getting spent the way it's supposed to? So there is annual reporting uh, as well as uh, action plans that are developed with the provinces. Um, the main metrics are the main metrics I alluded to, affordability. Mm -hmm. So ensuring that we get to the reduced uh, costs for families, as well as the space creation piece. Um, in the case of Alberta, I mentioned 68,000 uh, spaces we've agreed upon to have created within these uh, five years. They are at uh, just over 9,000 spaces that they have created um, through the work that, that we do together and the plans that they provide us. Uh, they have to demonstrate how they will meet those targets, so how they will meet, for example, the space creation target uh, by the end of the agreement. You heard the frustration there with Crystal Churcher, and, and like mm -hmm. she's very aware of the mm -hmm. jurisdictional splits here, right? Uh, you know, she said that's a province problem, this is a federal problem. She understands where the challenges are coming from. But if the system doesn't work for parents because of Alberta's not spending enough money, as you say, or the YMCA can't make a go of it because of the way the cash flow has come from Ontario, then it doesn't work, right? And, and that goes against the, the mm -hmm. policy objective that, that you're trying to set out here. So how can you overcome the jurisdictional walls mm -hmm. between the federal government and the provincial governments to overcome some of these challenges to, to get the program that your government wants? Yeah. Well, I would, uh, I would say that for the vast majority of provinces and territories, it is working really well. Mm. And I look to PEI. PEI, as of January 1st, has implemented $10 a day uh, child care, saving families $4,000 a year. Um, so we're seeing that progress. We're seeing out in BC, they've implemented wage increases for ECEs, as well as other benefits. So, you know, I think there's a lot of work to be done to work with provinces that are having challenges. And we do have dialogue, we have regular meetings um, collectively to ensure that they have the support and the best practices from other jurisdictions to learn from. 
Um, above and beyond, as I've, as I've said, I, I think there's an expe expectation from Canadian families that we build this system together. Many of these provinces celebrated when, this, when, this, uh, when these agreements were signed, when this policy was introduced, they celebrated this because they understand the impact it has for families in their provinces. So, you know, I think we all need to, to work together to make sure it's successful. Minister Jenna Suds, Minister of Families, Children and Social Development, thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate Pleasure. it. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.